Hey, Mzanzi, and welcome to Food for Mzanzi TV. My name is Dawn Numdu. I'm the editor at Food for Mzanzi, and we're live again with another session. And I'm joined today by Dr. Kobus Lopsha. He is an agricultural economist and independent consultant at Agility Agri. Welcome, Dr. Dr. Lopsha. It's great to have you with us. Yeah, good morning, Dawn. It's really a privilege to, 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 to be with you today. I read about you guys and the work you do, and it is fantastic. Uh, so very, very uh, nice to be on your show. Thank you very much. So Dr. Lopesha, I, I introduced you, but don't know much about you. You mentioned now that you, um, in Blue, you're in joining us from Bloemfontein, um, and you are an agricultural economist. But just a bit about yourself before we get started on today's session. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I was born and raised in Namibia and uh, went to the University of the Free State. And you believe you, 1971, I was the first year. I completed my graduate and undergraduate graduate study at, the, at this university. And then I was, uh, I further studied at the University of Illinois in the United States. Then came back, started to work as an economist and subsequently joined uh, the staff of the University of the Free State where I teach for 27 years, uh, 12 of which was full-time. 15 years part-time. So I was uh, a professor at, uh, in the, you know, at the University of the Department of Agricultural Econ Economics and subsequently, you know, joined the private sector. I also uh, uh, spent some of, the, of my career with Grain SA and uh, my, my, uh, my love for agriculture, I think I, I never was, a, you know, a child of a full-time farmer. But uh, my main interest was starting off as uh, interested in livestock, livestock marketing, etc. And subsequently, you know, become qualified and currently involved as a consultant, a strategic consultant uh, for Agility Agri and other uh, players in the, in, in, in the agricultural sector. And my main, main objective drive in life is to make agriculture better, meaning that you know, enhanced profitability on farms, etc. So that's what I am currently doing and both enjoying it very much, given what I've learned in the past and applying my expertise and learn a lot every day, new, a new learning curve, but very, very exciting. So as part of your work with Agility, you're joining us here today to, to talk a bit about what you, what, what we've sort of now termed future focused agriculture, especially amid uh, COVID-19. Um, COVID has specifically emphasized, um, as you've, 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 in our discussions before, you've mentioned um, that there's a fragmentation of rural markets for infrastructure and heavy regulatory burdens, um, which in turn raise costs for food systems firms. Um, now, now, what in your in your in your in your experience and, and especially around COVID nineteen have you seen in terms of um, COVID nineteen ba basically forcing farmers uh, to aggressively implement health, well being, and financial s services solutions to their businesses? Um, some would say that this was previously ignored um, within the agricultural industry. What have you seen in, in the past few months, Dr. Lopcha? Yeah, I think um, uh, COVID-19 uh, brought something, you know, into the space in terms of the place and the role agriculture can play as a sector in not just economic uh, rebuild, but, you know, also in terms of economic growth. Now, um, it was a concern that, that agriculture was more or less taken for granted. You know, it was the bus is, is running, they are foot on the, there's food on the table. People are more or less food secure. If there's no food on tables, it's not because of agriculture, it's because of other challenges such as uh, spendable, expended, uh, spendable income, etc. So what, what has the, what COVID-19 proved is, yes, um, we cannot go without food on the table. There's no way. South African agriculture could provide to that end. And the COVID uh, experience was not just happen overnight because farmers already decided you know, to produce prior to the COVID pandemic. So when uh, you know push come to shove and the tire hits the road, there were there was there was production already to be harvestable. You know, and these crops then found their way into the houses of, of the poor and the hungry. And and that 
prove the uh, commitment farmers have in South Africa. Now remember, we have uh, quite a diverse farming community from highly sophisticated, highly competitive, state-of-the-art farming operations still a very uh, low level in terms of subsistence farming. Now, I do not make a difference in terms of, you know, emerging or whatever they be. All of us are farmers. Mm. Now, let me take you a little bit back. Farmers are a very, very, uh, as a very, very simple calling. They want to produce food and they are able, you know, to convert grass to meat, grass to milk, um, uh, fertilizer and seed to a crop and stuff like that. It, it talks to the ability to combine technology, resources, inputs, etc. But at the stage, it's about faith. You will you believe that rain will come in time. And that sort of combination is unique. There's no substitute for that. Now, given that and, and what COVID shows is that farmers can live up to their commitment. And it wasn't for them, we had this, we would have had a lot of other problems. So yes. Uh, my involvement is that that how can we expedite and how can we fast track delivery? How can we be sure that food reads the table, healthy food in time, affordable? And that's a new challenge. And, and COVID showed us that classical, old fashioned way of thinking in terms of getting food from farm to fork needs to be updated. Unfortunately, in the beginning, uh, it shows that policy structures, policy environment is not conducive in terms of what we need to do. In fact, when farmers start to, to do night, it was actually uh, impediments from public uh, figures, public structures that prevent, you know, they want to become the givers. And they thought, the farmers just, you know, said, you know, we do not going to do that way. We want our food to the need, to the needy, and to the hungry people, let's proceed. Now, in summary, this puts agriculture in a totally different position. In terms of contribution to the GDP, it was the only sector that contributed positively over the past three quarters. So, and I think if government now want to, uh, if government is sincere in terms of economic restructuring, rebuild, agriculture must play a vital role in that, in that team to be rebuilt. Because business on farms will go on regardless of what government will tell them, but will they take. So make it better for them to produce and, 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 and it will just happen. And as you said so rightly, it, it, I was totally amazed by how many farmers um, sent truckloads of food during this time to um, communities who needed it most um, throughout the, the lockdown period and when, when things were really heightened in terms of um, understanding and, and there was a greater need for nutritious food to be shared to, to the most vulnerable um, within our country. And, and, and would you say that, that farmers are also now um, rethinking and relooking, um, rethinking how they view um, their labor force um, within, within the sector and also more specifically how they, um, they, they, they think about the, the people that work with them in the sector and and agricultural workers well-being and health um, is that more heightened um, would you say i think so because what stands out is that the uh, dependence on technology you know is increasing now if you become te technologically more inclined on farms in terms of production it will mean that there will be replacement of labor with capital mm -hmm. so yes uh, you know positioning farming primary producing or the primary producer level as a main uh, uh, creator of jobs may be a, a, a fallacy because that's not what's going to happen. So what I think what will happen now would be emphasis on higher technology uh, implementation of high technology implementation. I think that we will need higher skilled people on farms. And, and I think the whole workforce on farms will change. And, and farms need to be become more attractive as career opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that's a call that needs to be done. And in that regard, I then involve myself, avail myself of Agility Agri, you know, how can these conditions be improved? So farmers have to look different to their labor force. If they're not up to par in terms of skills level, it's upon them to ensure that they have the necessary skills. 
but there will be possibly shredding of some labor on farms to make make place for for technology but all in all it it talks to the sustainability of on farm in terms of what is affordable my 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 take is that we will see farmers become uh, uh, more technology uh, inclined use the technology have higher skilled people have different career opportunities but the, the, the dynamics on farm will change but as it stands working conditions employer employee relationship you know these kind of things the well being etc now needs to have have to be attended to differently than prior but also alarming is the fact that when you care for your people you're concerned about their health for instance there's no constructive support systems in terms of primary health care clinics etc so farmers then have to take additional responsibility and they want to do they will do that to ensure that the workforce you know that the people that work for them are healthy are productive and i think in that space there's a lot to be done to, in support of that farmers as i said their main focus is production of food but if they can get administrative support in terms of backup in terms of of what 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 we, what they can do and take that sort of burden from there then they can also enhance in terms of their primary calling producing food profitably now dr lopsho when farmers consider this and they want to take action um through agility um agri is there is there ways for them to to develop sort of innovative fully custom customizable solutions that works for their specific agri business is it do you have to what is what what do they need to know at this point yeah i think uh, you know in, at first farmers had to make you know have to change their minds in terms of looking different to the to the people at their disposal and then so not i mean human resources on a farm is not just you know people you hire and they work and you fire if you don't work it's it's about as a building a relationship now i i came from the environment where we had that relationship you know farmers consider their employees as extended family mm-hmm. now if we can support that relationship i think that mm-hmm. will enhance productivity now back to your question is once the um, farmer decided that i want to work differently with not with in terms of they separate from me as a team on a farm and that there's a different uh, need that needs to be addressed then it's like you know you decide to buy a bucky if you made that decision and you decide i want to buy a 4 by 4 bucky you made the decision then comes the decision to so which brand you want to to buy now I, i'm saying that in this space we will probably see more people entry this kind of market and and in that space i think agility as as a legacy as as a, as a history of 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 tools they can they can use it can be customized you know within the requirement of the law but they are positioned to partner become partners in mission in that regard you know and and i think they well positioned and they increase their ability to do that so yes farmers will have to look in terms of who will provide the best for what i need and then in that in that regard negotiate to to get what you want and also listen to what is presented because if you if you want a product and you you enter into that sort of space one eye you know then then you're not going to get the best solution so maybe we can also get standardized procedures you know in terms of how they will that become the new normal mm-hmm. that we ensure that our people are healthy and safe and then they become productive and then we have a team on the farm and then we can attend to what is required on the farm towards profitable profitable farming as such sounds promising dr lopsha and i'm sh- i'm sure you are aware of many farmers who already changed their thinking around how they operate on their farms um working as a team and not and as separate units um and and this is definitely something that 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 sounds quite possible as a way to move forward um, in South African agriculture you so right fortunately the 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 number of farm operations you know that that apply these principles and are are right for this are on the increase and and you know what we do not want to see is a induced sort of separation on mm-hmm. farms by all kinds of legislation unnecessary you know so a farm is different I spoke to farmers you know last week in terms of is is a dairy farmer you know cows need to be milk 
at a certain time. When when the ewes are in la- you know, like when they the, the lambs are coming, you cannot tell the lamb, wait, you know, until tomorrow morning at eight mm-hmm. o'clock, then my people will be there. You have to attend to this broken and water supply. So it's it's a different career on farms. Mm-hmm. And, and and once we have to restore that kind of relationship, you cannot be guided by legislation alone. But it's about mutual respect, you know, on both sides. Once you have that, and I see when once you have that, we have a harmony. On a farm, and and when you have that, I tell you that farm will progress. So let's see how we can restore. And I think what what Agility Agri present is just that you know, not to have sort of an instrument in their hands that can be used and abused. It's a question of how can we restore harmony, how can we get more productive, more integrated, given the diversity on farms in terms of skills level and job and certainly, but. And then I want to add that farmers now also must prepare themselves to accommodate, you know, this, these newcomers, these new higher skilled people. It's not a question, you know, and oh, I'm boss on the plus and I'll decide what to do and how mm-hmm. to do it. It's about, about applying new modern management, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of approaches in terms of delegation and stuff like that. That's how we want to see a farm. Mm-hmm. I know very well small farms small labor force, but even that, you know, farmers need to, need, need, as much as they progress on the production side, also now needs progression in terms of uh, how they um, work uh, in terms of manage the, the labor force on their farm. There's a lot of challenges, Dawn. Mm. It's different than a, than a factory and stuff like that, yeah. but I think we can customize it. We can make it more doable. On farms, you know, to 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 unlock the potential, and I think if we do that, we'll see people want to go back to farms because they want to stay rural. You know, now they need support, as I said, you know, health, etc. But just for instance, if you consider access to data on farms, remote areas, how can that contribute in terms of skills upliftment, training, etc.? So you do not. You know, what the people now that I think going to cities will be a bit, will we have a better life? We have to turn it around to see actually better life in rural areas, providing that we have access to that. And know what farmers, they know the shortfall and they are accommodating that. You know, if there's something went wrong on a farm and a child gets sick, you take them to the hospital, take them to your private GP to mm-hmm. ensure, you know, because you cannot afford staying dependent on a clinic that's not properly fitted, not have the expertise, they have the medicine, etc., because you want the people healthy that they mm-hmm. can contribute. And that kind of teamwork needs to be restored. And I'm very, very positive that the pandemic, uh, you know, opened new, new avenues in terms of appreciation of what farmers will and can do. You've just mentioned the overall well-being. And if you take care of um, people that work with you on the farm as part of a team, if they are healthy, they have a healthy body, healthy mind, and they aspire to, to build farm and 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 the agri business together then it then it makes it but there's many benefits in the long run but if you could maybe just highlight some of the benefits of adherence um to these requirements and and if there's a specific time frame yeah i think you know farm every farm will, will you know will work differently but for instance if you work with a farm that what you have in the western cape and other parts of the country they exporters of you know these guys are very very they they looked at in terms of this traceability so they're more in the open in terms of their practice etc i'm not necessarily to refer to these guys we can learn from them so what i'm talking about in a deep rural areas for a farm a family on the farm so you know get get them in as part of extended family you know it was it was necessary for farmers not to have laborers stay on the farm because of legislation etc etc how can we restore that, that those guys stay on the farm and improve life living conditions on the farm? What will, what will it mean? Access to, you know, to, 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 to food, good food, access to, you know, as I said, uh, recreation and stuff like that. So these are the things that need to be done. So what I think it's proper sit down as you do your annual planning and your budgeting and cash flow production set, which you want to give to the bank, etc., for yourself, sit down and, and develop a human resource utilization plan, you know, in terms of what do you have, what do you will value, what will require, who will help, what do you do if the, the, the wife of the, of the guys that works on the farm during daytime, what do you do? I know of farmers where the farmer's wife engages in training 
the wives of the laborers on the farm, you know, educating them, giving them access. And sometimes what will, what can they do? They can start sort of new businesses on the farm. I know of farmers where these, these women in, in, in the winter, they engage in you know, the processing of cane meat, you know, bulk tongue and drawers and stuff like that and stuff. These are, this is things that you can do, but it, you know, enable them to better look after their own children, their own families in terms of feeding, in terms of education and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the things that we can do with not will not come at high cost, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a new dispensation that you talk to the heart of people and you enable them to do exactly that because all mothers and fathers, regardless where they live, want to see a better outcome for their children than what they have themselves. It's not a shame to work on a farm. Nothing wrong with that. And we know of many, many children from farmers that become, you know, became science, will renowned scientists, and whatever the case may be. Let's go back and see. Because when on a farm, you are able to, be, to learn differently about life, about respect for life and stuff like that. And I think we can do much more in that regard as farmers. And then by so doing, you, you make them more, you know, as on a team basis, you, you, you make them become member of a team. And I think we will address a lot of other social ills also once we successful in that regard. Dr. Lopesha, I think you've, you've highlighted a few things. The fact that um, the agricultural industry as a whole has really um, fast-tracked economic growth. That's what we've, we've sort of seen over, over this COVID period. Um, and then also in terms of profitability, um, ensuring that we work together um, and, and, and as part of a team um, and not see ourselves as isolated unit when we, when we operate agribusiness and also the implementation of some more technological advancements and, and farmers starting to incorporate that as well. And then just the overall well-being of, of farms and agribusiness um, throughout the country. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to add in closing before well, as, as we wrap up this session? I think, uh, yes, I think we, it takes two to tango. So if we expect from other role players to make it easier for us on farms to, to do what we need to do, we must also enable them to better understand us. So we must always try to contribute, you know, downstream in terms of the, the well, value chain that the product leaving our farm gate deserve the respect we think it, it takes, you know, and, and then become more vigilant in terms of where our product ends up and what is the condition and stuff like that. What I see, and that is what's going to happen, that there's a total new demand for fresh food, fresh, you know, fresh produce. And there's, there's the new normal is uh, not eating out, eating at home, uh, nesting at home. And, and we should then talk cognizant of what is the new dispensation in terms of demand and ex expectation, how they will spend the money. We will have to compete for the money of the consumer which is becoming less, he wants to spend, he wants to keep it, not spend it. So yes, it's a double new dispensation. So all of us had to contribute, you know, towards that. And I think if, why do, does a farmer want to do it alone? You know, get, get these people behind him and that team will be, will be the winner in my, in, in, in my opinion. Thank you so much, Dr. Corbus Lopesha is an agricultural economist and independent consultant to Agri, Agility Agri. Really great to have you with us um, today, Dr. Lopesha, and everything of the best with the work that you're doing. Thank you, and same to you. Really appreciate what you guys do. You're talking to the heart of people. You're very convincing in terms of what you present. Good, you know, good work. Keep up, keep up the good work. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much.